Yeah, well, I'm on a short break at the moment from, from the business practitioner, as you can see, I'm down here in my office, and the people are upstairs are just having a break as well. I'll be going back upstairs to join a group in a moment for the rest of the break, just to see how it's, how, what their experiences are like, and to get further feedback from, from them as well. Um, because obviously, feedback is important on any practitioner course, whether it's a business practitioner, uh, a regular practitioner, or a practitioner um, for any other application as well. One of the things that I have been interested in in putting forward in the NLP market for some time is practitioner courses with a specific application. And this is an example of a practitioner course uh, with a specific application, in this case the application being purely business. Uh, we want to run a practitioner course which is the application being um, for medical professionals, so therefore in that case the application is for health and fitness. Uh, we've done practitioner courses which are set up purely for coaches, coaching NLP practitioner courses. And you can do practitioner courses, which is another area of interest of ours, uh, for education, for NLP practitioner courses, where the main market would be teachers. So, um, if you look at NLP and the viewer of this film uh, is aware of NLP, you'll be aware of NLP as a process oriented change and learning methodology. And a process oriented uh, format for change uh, and creating new things in life uh, is excellent because you can apply NLP therefore to pretty much any area of domain. So the content, in this case business, or the content of health and health and fitness, or the content of education, what we do is we get the NLP tools, which are usually taught in the practitioner course, uh, for generalistic applications and apply those tools purely to the domain of interest um, that we're exploring at this time, in this case business. So for example, if we take the language patterns in NLP, Meta model and Milton model, um, these were modeled from actually um, brilliant therapists. What we do in a business practitioner is apply these distinctions purely from the business perspective. So how do you use the Milton model for marketing, for example? How do you use the hypnotic patterns of Milton Erickson to communicate effectively in a sales environment? How do you use the use of presuppositions when you're coaching uh, or working with people who, in your teams? The meta model, how do you use the meta model uh, to chunk down into the relevant detail uh, so you have a dynamic model um, for listening and then creating uh, interventions based on the syntactic communication that other people provide you with. So these are business applications. Um, right now, the class I'm going to do an exercise on submodalities. Now, again, in a general practitioner class, people learn to elicit submodalities um, um, in an explicit fashion, and we do that here as well. Uh, but really and truly, then, the business application of this is recognising how to do that without a formal elicitation. So an NLP practitioner who's trained well, uh, particularly in the business sense, will understand how different people are organising their subjective experience purely on their non-verbal behaviour as to where they put their pictures, how they, where they're holding certain feelings, where they're hearing certain sounds from, and so on. Therefore, a business person can be much more effective in how they communicate with people, recognising uh, how those people around them uh, are organising their own subjective experience.